This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to for creating your own slick looking website or online store. Hello cheapskates, all hail that $800 full frame bokeh monster of a lens. Here it is, the Midcon 0.95 Mark III. What exactly is new with the Mark III? Well, apparently it's smaller. I don't know which aspect of it exactly is smaller. More resistant flaring and available for Nikon Z now, which you can see here, because it's mounted to the Z6. So what precisely do you get for your 800 bucks? Well, let's say you do get your money's worth because, well, look, the lens hood doesn't even fit properly. It doesn't click into place. My one at least. And the lovely shiny metal mount on the front of the lens is starting to strip the plastic on the lens hood. And the choice of font, well, hardly inspired and kind of doesn't really match the rest of the lens. But there we go. That aperture ring is clickless, presumably for video geeks. That's actually quite smooth, as is the focus ring. I mean, at least they've done something right, right? It goes from 0.5, which is pretty damn close. That is quite a long focus row. I guess you really need it for lenses like this. The plane of focus is gonna be way for thin. Not way thin, like, it's like a slice of palm ham. But that, that doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? All right, enough about QC, what about IQ? I'm telling you, this thing really sucks ass through a straw. It's the lens hood. This has got to go immediately. <laughs> now, another thing that does suck bum, but maybe not through a straw, is the clickless aperture. I mean, it's nice if you're a video geek, but if you're shooting stills like I have, and I've been meaning to shoot all of them at 0.95, I accidentally switched the aperture to a smaller setting without knowing it. And then when I went home, I thought, where's the broker? It's because my ring is slack and without click, okay? Yeah, anyway, rant over. Oh, head of a better. But I have to say that I'm not too optimistic about the optics of this because I've tested a previous version of this. Anyway, let's take some shots. <laughs> it's on F16. What's the bokeh like at F16? Mm. Now that was the first version that I tested and that was super, super soft, wide open, super flary, lots and lots of spherical aberration that just makes it look glowy. I mean, that makes it sound like a positive Oh, your skin's glowing. Oh, you, your photo's glowing. No, it's a bad thing. It's soft. Bogey. Bogey. Bogey Buddha. But yeah, if people always say sharpness isn't everything. Oh, sharpness is overrated. You don't need sharpness to make a good picture. Well, there's none of it with the Midcon Speedmaster. Oh, it looks swirly though. I'm finding that this aperture ring, I'm finding that my slack ring is just moving for no apparent reason. I mean, what is it? I've, I've barely touched it. The wind? Spirits? Did I fart and move it? Jeez. It's not a case of might. It will accidentally change aperture setting. But when you do use the right setting, wide open, the blurry bits are Barkalicious. Now it's got to be said that this is pretty soft wide open. Whether it's as soft as the previous versions, I don't know. They were as soft as baby poo wide open. This is definitely some kind of baby poo kind of texture. But it seems sharper than before. I, I don't know if it's just me. It feels like there's some kind of definition, but it definitely still glows. Damn it, it's moved, <laughs> changed aperture again. Maybe that's why it seems like it's sharper because it's not actually F0.95. It's actually moved again. What is wrong? Oh dear, this one's lost its head. Softness, that's one thing. But another thing is that the fact that at F0.95, the plane of focus is so thin, Parmaham thin, it's incredibly hard to nail that focus. I mean, even when you zoom in, and you've got peaking on. <laughs> just this, what, one slight movement, you just move like a millimeter forwards and that's it. Out of focus. It's enough of a challenge to focus on lifeless subjects, but when things start moving, focusing is all a bit hit and miss. Well, 95% miss. But either way, in focus or not, right aperture setting or not, 
it's still soft, wide open, right? Oh, look how your skin glows, my friend. Oh no, that's just the lens. It's softer than your man mams. I think I just got bitten by a mosquito on my bum. Kinky bastards. I suppose we could just keep stopping it down until we find out when it gets sharp. Sharpish. But what's the point of that? This is a 0.95 lens. You want to use it mostly at 0.95. It's big and it's heavy, so there's no point carrying that extra weight if you're just going to shoot at f5.6 all the time. Having said that, with that aperture ring, you're probably going to be shooting f5.6 inadvertently all the time anyway. But let's not forget that this is still an $800 lens. That might sound cheap for 0.95 when you compare it to like a Noctilux 0.95, but not if you compare it to 50mm lenses generally. Generally? That's a freaking load of money for a 50mm lens. So are you getting good value and performance out of this? Okay, so in the blue corner I've got $800 Midcon Speedmaster 50mm 0.95. Oh, that's a mouthful. In the red corner I have got the Nikon 50mm 1.4 AFD. Also in the red corner I've got this, the Helios 58mm F2, 44.2. How much does it cost? Peanuts. Probably cheaper than like a lens cap. Held together by bits of tape right there. Okay, bokeh test. We've established that the bokeh from the Mitcon is somewhat desirably dreamy. Smooth like melted marshmallows. The much loved Helios produces some swirly goodness, mostly soft, but you can see that some of it looks a little bit harsh too. The Nikon produces crappy bokeh. Out of the three, yes, the Mitcon has the best looking bokeh. In terms of sharpness, the Nikon is best, then the Helios, and then... Okay, wow. Wondered why the air of focus elements are so soft? Well, the in focus bits are soft too. And it's still worse than the Nikon at f1.4. And really, it doesn't outshine the Helios when stopped down either. I like bokeh. Everyone likes bokeh. And that's what this lens is all about, nothing else. But at $800, it's hard to recommend anyone to buy something that only has one quality. It's not really a one and only 50mm kind of lens, not even a second one. It's such a niche lens. It's probably mainly for video users too, because that aperture ring is as annoying as a mosquito bite on your ass. Damn, it's moved again. But useful for video peeps. And I don't think there are that many truly fucking ugly people that require that softness for portraits. Nor do you need the speed in a world with insane high ISO performance. If you want unique bokeh, then here you are. But at far less, you can get a better all-round lens. And for $800 for a better overall lens, you're kind of sport for choice. This video was sponsored by Squarespace. It's a brilliant place to go to if you want to set up your own website, store, just your own domain. It's simple to transfer over your current domain. And the great thing is that it's got an easy to understand user interface with a plethora of award-winning templates to make building beautiful websites that much easier. What's more, there's 24 seven customer service if you ever need help. You can start a free trial today and get 10% off your first purchase by clicking the link in the description below and using the discount code KAI. Thanks for watching, see ya.